Kenson and his wife Symbol aren't that different from parents across Australia. They're homeowners who work hard to feed their family and give their kids a good education. Unlike most Australian mums and dads, they don't have jobs, a mortgage or even a bank account. In fact, like 80% of the population in Vanuatu, they have very little need for money at all. The only thing that we need money for is to pay for that salt so that it can give taste to our local foods and then to make sure that our kids go to school with clean clothing, then we need soap and then we need kerosene to be uh, poured into our lamps so that we could be able to eat at night with a little bit of light. According to the United Nations, Vanuatu is classed as a least developed country. But poverty is relative. No one goes hungry here. They live on their ancestral land, collect rainwater for drinking and washing, and grow, fish and hunt for their food. Not everything's free, but when they need money to pay for their children's school fees, they can literally make their own. I pay my school fees in weaving mats like this one, the one I'm doing. Um, what I do is uh, I get them ready and then I get them up to school and then uh, I pay for the school fee with Matt. Villagers here and in many parts of Vanuatu can now pay medical bills and school fees with food they grow and with ceremonial wealth items like mats and pigs. In North Pentecost, this mat isn't just worth money, it is money a traditional or custom currency. When someone needs an extra mat for a custom ceremony, they'll know where to come to buy one. Custom activity inside the community happens all the time. It happens all the time. It's the same death and marriage, custom ceremony, make a beast with them, narrow one. So, you look at them, but by the time they meet them, they say, "Me, value plus custom mat, plus life plus people, me big one bit in cash, money." Most economists have no conception whatsoever that other economic systems exist in the world besides theirs, and that have existed probably from before any of the current nations in Europe were ever founded. Anthropologist Kirk Huffman spent 12 years as curator of the Vanuatu Cultural Center. Things are incredibly rare. This is fossilized clamshell money from the island of Eromango. He's now a research associate at the Australia Museum in Sydney. This is uh, blood money. This is worth a human life. This may be some of the rarest kind of money in the world. This is this incredibly rare red feather money. And I think there may only be a, a very few people in the world, maybe less than half a dozen, in the world who have the knowledge and the rights to make this type of currency. The most valuable currency in much of Vanuatu is pig. Have a look at these uh, circular pig's tusks from uh, northern central and northern Vanuatu. This is early collections. Pigs with special tusks are sacrificed in custom ceremonies. 
But this, just look at this one, look at this one. This is just, this pig was probably so sacred that it may have been, even been too sacred to sacrifice in ritual. Sacred and an extreme pain. To grow a pig that's long in the tooth, other teeth have to be pulled out, so the curling tusks can penetrate the pig's upper jaw. So why has the pig become the Melanesian equivalent of the gold standard? In certain cultures within Vanuatu, the relationship between man and pigs is so close that without the involvement of pigs in your life, you can never, after death, get to the world of the spirits. And so it's only normal in a way that pigs could develop into a certain type of currency, a sacred currency, money with legs. I have 10,000 vatu. I have now Bobby Pia. I look at this plane, I have a pen, I have a little bit of cotton. The local school charges market rates for these, between $100 and $200 each. I have a mambo, 15,000 vatu. I have a look at Bringing home the bacon on Pentecost means men like Kenson spend years nurturing the family pigs. This one's now worth about $200. From some time we will soon blow them a woman, especially we will let them school in a law to blame. You have six daughters, Simbal. Yes. And uh, you will get a lot of pigs when they get married? Absolutely right. Ten pigs per daughter. Are you looking forward to this? Yes, of course. Hopefully some of the kids won't die. Just by under my care, I hopefully that they have 60 pigs by the time they're all grown up. So the daughters, they are also valuable because they are the key to getting more pigs? Yes, absolutely. So I'm a fortunate mother with six kids. Mm -hmm daughters I mean and the son you have to pay pigs for him I to have get married. to pay 10 pigs for him to get married so that minus 60 pigs and then I'm left with 50 pigs you'll be a very happy old lady yes thank you Amos. on the east coast of North Pentecost faith in the custom economy has led to a financial revolution Traditionally, only the tusks on a live pig are valuable, or on the skull of a pig that hasn't been sacrificed. But here, the tusks themselves have become objects of great value. And they've built a bank to store them. Ni you me think say mabai lo future uh, custom bank blue you me mabai me work together with them every foreign bank around the world. Long help them everyone. Lo side by economy. Chief Viraleo Bobarenvenua says ten thousand people from Pentecost and neighboring islands have deposited their custom wealth here. <laughs> He's invented a new unit of exchange, the Levatu, to measure the value of pig tusks. He issues bank books and even cheque books that can be used at some of the island's shops. <laughs> Concepts of credit, debit, and even compound interest do exist in the custom economy. But critics accuse Chief Viraleo of distorting custom and question the choice of a currency that's only found in some parts of Vanuatu. Suppose you live low, uh, live low wall, let me change, but you, you know, you know, current custom blue you belong, you make him belong, let me stay with them live, but my custom blue you, but my. According to his own valuation, Chief Viraleo says the bank's 
custom assets are worth 1.4 billion Australian dollars. But he's not worried about thieves. Uh, say, suppose, for example, suppose you want you come blue steel, lo blesia. Ata suppose you want custom security, ba ulo kuli miu, ba you no sabe. By money no look track blo ulo kaya talo you. Say ah money ulo din situm, so we want them coincide ya. Ulo kamu ulo look you date you stop, ba ulo no sabe you date lo one ni miu miu. Say mana ay mo custom security. Chief Viraleo has effectively been printing his own money. Now he wants a license to make it official. He's called upon the government and Reserve Bank to recognise his custom currency and agree to a fixed rate of exchange with the national currency, the Vatu. Do you see Chief Viraleo as a champion of tradition or as a savvy capitalist? As an innovator with a capitalist tinge, but many of the cultures in that part of Vanuatu are traditionally capitalist in a Melanesian way. Vanuatu's economic direction is hotly contested at the moment. National elections are being held later in the year, and politicians have come under fire for agreeing to join the World Trade Organization, or WTO. What am I you, Fredlin? Mimi na luga nilisan. Bami tala one example. Spos, one big problem ika sa Mimi lovan watu. Small country ya bambay wala na yung Mimi kan. Mimi mas join them on Bibi wala trading partner. From where what them small voice no iya. Wali sabi hari mantap. The push to get Vanuatu to join the World Trade Organization is a very good example of this having to choose where do we go in Vanuatu. Ralph Reganvanu is an opposition MP and former cabinet minister who's championed support for the custom economy. We are promoting an economy which basically exists in 20% of the country or affects 20% of the population. Ham Lini is currently Deputy Prime Minister and brother of the late Walter Lini, Vanuatu's independence hero. When he was Prime Minister, he declared 2007 to be the year of the traditional economy. No, think, think no more. Come was a lot of time in the right one commitment work of money, make them not think, think, no, maybe some help a little bit, no, make them work, I come up. But then, by custom currency, I mean, not even the most local command, but by him, he stopped, some of them make them work, blame him one no more. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, uh, Han, Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, time we come to today, I'm going to look at you. one issue of my rice. Where many of them want to try head to pick to one custom ceremony. Whatever its role in the country's political life, the Deputy Prime Minister embraces the custom economy in his personal life. I think when we have need to make them more, I think the side block of one maybe a little bit requirement to try to make them a little bit constitution when we talk about FATU. But the tell the constitution when we talk about FATU no more. I mean, I'm going to cover them up about the traditional thing, thing, blah, or custom economy, or something, stuff, talk about. As the world frets about the fragility of its financial system, supporters of Vanuatu's custom economy say it isn't a relic from the past. It represents hope for the future. Vanuatu is very fortunate because we, we can still uh, imagine a different sort of society, a different sort of economy, a different sort of way of living. That is not what the rest of the world has gone, well, most of the rest of the world has gone into. The local economy idea, the green economy idea, we already have it. Or somewhere, crisis will stop. Vanuatu is harem. But at the same time too, Vanuatu is ready. I'm ready to teach him all Naravala country suppose you need him help. Long find him good for the road to life. 
Sa ating himyanong, thank you to Mas.